Um, and I got really, really lucky and, and with an opportunity to work at JP Morgan doing internal consulting for them. And that was a great, great training ground because, you know, you're moving around from different parts of the business, investment banking, private banking, cash management, commercial, all of those different spaces. You're learning how to deal with people. Those are the big things that you take away, how to deal with people, processes, how to think on your feet, that kind of thing. Um, and so I spent some time there, I was there for about four years. And decided, okay, now that I went, that was my desperation job, right? And it was great experience and I learned a lot. How then do I go and find the thing that I want to go and do? And so decided to go to business school, linked up with the MLT program, which was like one of those things that I was, I remember sitting in an MLT, it's Management Leadership for Tomorrow for people who aren't familiar with it. Great program. They have college prep and MBA prep programs and some executive programs as well. And the whole idea of getting people of color, people that look like us, into the C-suite. And so I remember sitting at a um, info session and I was go, I, and having the conversation in my head, oh crap, now I got to go back to school because I'm so inspired and I want to go and I think that this is the right time. And, you know, that was the moment. Um, and so I went to Duke um, and fully with the intention of doing either consulting or banking. And, uh, you know, consulting, I remember speaking with a, a very successful Black woman who was, um, you know, traveling a lot, but she was like, well, you get to go to places like Iowa. <laughs> you get to that. All my frequent flyer miles are to places like Akron. Um, and so that didn't sound as sexy and certainly with the hours. And then the investment banking side was like, well, I get to see my kids twice a week and I get paid the equivalent of, you know, IHOP employees um, on the hours that I'm working. So, I was like, okay, this isn't going to work. What do I do? And that's where I discovered brand management. Um, and it's something that I was never aware of. I had no idea. I thought the Keebler elves actually made the cookies. I didn't understand that there are people, you know, making decisions and, um, you know, trying to develop and build out a business and, and using strategy and, and all of those, um, you know, great skill sets. So it was a great fit for me. Um, I did that post uh, business school, went into the food business because I love food. And, um, you know, was with Kraft Foods for about six and a half years um, and bounced around a bit. So the corporate, you know, we can talk about and touch on corporate and stuff like that if you want. But like the corporate space is a very volatile space, I think, for everyone at this point. A lot of people are very stressed. And certainly when you're in the minority community um, and certainly a female in the space, it can be um, unimaginably volatile. And so, you know, going through the processes of layoffs, going through the process of reorgs and all of that stuff, I actually landed in Denver, um, outside of my comfort zone, outside of Chicago, outside of New York. Um, and I've worked in a couple companies here that gave me a really strong skill set in places that I hadn't had the opportunity to, um, both in digital marketing, um, as well as, you know, targeting and consumer insights. So, uh, not to get into too much detail, but that's sort of my non-linear, linear, contiguous, not quite continuous story. Um, and I started the found, I founded the Black Travel Box about a year and a half ago while I was still working um, as a passion project. I was on a trip. Um, as I mentioned, you know, corporate can be intense. One of the things that I really relish is the ability to take my vacation time that I've earned and the money that I've earned and go somewhere. Um, and so I've been an avid traveler since I got my passport at like 25. And so, you know, 16 countries later, I'm sitting in Japan and I'm like, I did not plan for this trip well. I hit some major humidity, looked all kinds of crazy. And I had this little three and a half ounce bottle. And, you know, as, as people are sometimes want to do, I complained about it. I whined about it. Oh, this is the beginning of the trip. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I had a really great conversation with my boyfriend, actually, who, who said, well, this is what you, this is basically your last like 10 years of your career. Why don't you create it? And so started off as a passion project. Um, and eventually, you know, I, uh, I can say this because I think we're, we're all fam here. I left the plantation in September. And <laughs> I... Emancipation Day. <laughs> what day was your emancipation day? Do you know? September 1st. September 1st. <laughs> yes. 2018. Um, and, it, you know, there is a, an odd relief. When you're at the point that you don't want to be paid to do those things anymore, you want to be paid to be in that space, you got to move on. And, and I thought about, you know, there's that little voice, usually the sound of people who are a generation behind you that go, why would you leave your job and you could do this? Why would you, you know, 
And I had that thought of, you know, I, I should just go find another job. No, I have the black travel box. I can give myself, you know, the next three or six months and really dig deep in here and see what we can do with it. If I get traction, awesome. I'm going to go for it full time. If not, I'll come back. And um, the three months after that were a whirlwind. And it's, and now I'm like, well, I guess I'm not going back. Here I am. <laughs> gotcha. So tell us what's been going on the last three months. And then we'll go back into your story a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, after the, the, the September, so basically Q4 um, of last year was, you know, it was a series of PR, you know, placements, um, Black Enterprise coverage, Essence, Travel Noir, partnerships with, um, you know, organizations like Nomadness Travel Tribe, which is our, our core customer. Um, and if you guys aren't familiar with what I do, the Black Travel Box is a personal care products company for travelers of color. So that's why I mentioned, you know, the thing with the hair conditioner, that was the impetus. It was that not feeling like I could be authentically and holistically myself because I just felt salty. I just felt salty. I was sitting there. I was just like, I don't want to take any pictures. You know, I'm just going to put this up in a fuzzy bun and just keep walking around. Um, and so that was the impetus for it. But our products are beyond hair care, it's hair care and body care. Um, we'll start to get into some other areas as well. Anything that can make the traveling experience more comfortable, one, in your skin, um, and then two, in general, because at the end of the day, you know, you don't want to have to go 15 different places to get everything that you need. Um, and so, you know, over, as I've been telling my story over the Q4, um, just remarkable not notoriety has come about. And that was a great signal. Additionally, I was getting sales and I wasn't marketing. Like, I mean, we had an, we had an Instagram, we have a page, but it was really more like a very, very soft launch. It was essentially a beta launch. Um, and we, you know, talked with influencers mainly to actually get feedback to say, Hey, I got this idea. I got this problem. Does this make sense to you? Because you are an influencer in the travel space. You travel a lot. You're an influencer in the beauty space. You see a lot of products come across your desk. Is the quality there? Is the concept there? Is this something that people would want? And so I use that time to sort of market test that and, and just got, you know, amazing results to me in, in terms of, um, you know, getting traction, the notoriety. Um, the big story, the big aha for me was I went to Inc. 5000. Um, and that is an event for, you know, the fastest growing companies in, you know, the U.S. Um, and, you know, they have this curated list and it's a major gala and all of that. I was not on the list. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to sound like I was on the list. But again, my boyfriend, my partner was with me or he was actually there to speak. And so I got the benefit. Always, always get your plus one. I got the benefit of being the plus one. And so since he was a VIP, I had a VIP badge and I, that allowed me to get in rooms with people that I wouldn't be with uh, otherwise. And I actually ended up um, in the room with the executive um, editor of Inc. And he and I spent a, the best, better part of an hour talking about Instapot recipes and how annoying it is to make uh, allergy-free food for these kids these days because they're allergic to everything. <laughs> so just fun, nice, small talk, you know? And it, it's amazing what you can bond over with a person who's very, very different, from you, very different background. He's in New York. He's, you know, an executive. He's doing all of these different things. Um, and we had we had a really great conversation. And then he turns to me, you know, kind of seriously and goes, OK, so what's the black travel box? Because it was on my my lanyard. And so I tell him, I give him my spiel. We're a personal care product company. Travel is the color. We're, you know, just starting out. With that new. He's great. Hold on a second. I want you to talk to somebody. So then his um, you know, immediate uh, direct report. She's a, effectively the true sort of editorial um, liaison for everything that happens on the site and all of that stuff. And um, she comes over. She goes to introduce me. And she goes, oh, I know who you are. And now I'm like, can I, can I be real? I'm like, no, you don't, but you're being nice. I appreciate that. <laughs> That's that little voice. You have to be, you have to be careful. That little voice will tell you some BS. I don't know if we have bleeps here, so I'm going to try to keep it clean. Um, but, you know, that little voice was like, she doesn't really know you. She's just being nice. And then she said, the Black Travel Box, I heard about you. We actually discussed you, but you guys were in beta, and we didn't want to engage you just yet. We wanted to give you a chance to kind of grow and, and, and build what you're doing. And I was like, oh, I didn't tell her I was in beta. She really does know who I am. Yeah. Um, but that was an amazing moment. 
that was an amazing moment because it's, it, you know, the opportunity of getting in the door and then being able to meet these people in person, you got to be prepared for it. You got to be ready when somebody asks you, what do you do? Like, all right, bet, this is what we're going to talk about. Um, and so that told me the legitimacy of that reaction from a very mainstream space that looks at a number of industries. Um, you know, that was the extra kick that said, yeah, you're not going back to corporate. You're not, you're not going to be spending your time there. Gotcha. Um, and so that's where we are. That's where we are. So now Q1, we're, we're building. Um, we just opened up a round of angel, for angel investors um, to get some scale, get some cash flow in so that we can start to really acquire customers in a meaningful way. And then beef up staff because I am a one woman full time machine with a lot of help from informal mentors, informal um, supporters and coaches, as well as, you know, contractors, which is a lot of the gig economy. We could talk about that, too. Um, it's very it makes it very, very easy that that barrier to entry to running a company like a true company is so much lower now that there's so much talent out there that you can truly pay on an hourly basis and they take it or on a project basis and they take it very seriously because it's their livelihood as well. So yeah, it's, that's where we are. Love it. Love it. And there's so many different things that we could touch on. And, you know, I want to mm -hmm. touch on your story a little bit in terms of just your background, right? So, you know, yep. you went to University of Chicago undergrad, um, pre-med. Yeah, pre-med, then you went to Duke for business school, and, you know, you've always mm -hmm. been one of the most analytical people that I know uh, in terms of knowing how to deconstruct problems uh, and solve those problems yeah. at the same time. And, you know, that's the skill set that I've always admired about you.